As we said, we are on the Thursday before the passing away of the Prophet. So we, we just went through one, one incident that Thursday. There's a second incident. It's not over. These people who were supposed to all be with Osama, getting ready to leave, somehow all these companions found themselves inside the house and inside the room where the Holy Prophet was lying down. And they were talking and the Holy Prophet would go in and out, as we said, from consciousness. And, and at some point, he started talking to them and he told them, give me something with which I can write and something on which I can write. Okay, so basically a pen and paper or the equivalent. So that I may write something to you that if you were to follow it, you will never go astray. You will never be misguided. Some of them got ready to go get the piece of bone or whatever the Holy Prophet was going to write on. And others, and there is all sorts of versions of this depending on which book you read. Some say others, some say one man, and some say Omar. Okay? And there are three answers that were given at this time. One answer, very clearly this one is attributed to Umar ibn al-Khattab. He says, the holy book, the book of God, is sufficient for us. <coughs> That's one answer. The second answer is, pain has overtaken the man. So it's implied what he's saying. The third one, it's not implied, it's explicit. He says, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَهْجَرُ or لَيَهْذُ which basically means he's hallucinating. So he's lost his mind. He's asking to write a free will in the, you know, in this, at this time, he has lost his mind. Now these two things, by the way, there's a reason why they're mentioned even in the books of Fatah, because that opens a whole chapter in Fatah. If someone is in that state, someone is about to die, someone is passing away, we're not sure what state they're in, can you rely on their will or not? Can you rely on the recommendations or not? If they say, don't give me this medication, you, if you do, you're going against my will. Do you have to respect that or can you force them? Okay, that's, that's the reason why this is discussed in fiqh. But to discuss it in fiqh, you need to have a, a solid foundation. So they go to this to see how did the Prophet deal with it? And how, how did the scholars deal with what the Prophet said? And how did the companions deal with it? In any case, park that aside. So this created a great commotion. Some of the companions wanted the Holy Prophet to write. And here we have others saying, there's no need to write, the man is hallucinating, pain has overtaken him. So of course, some of them, they consider that a great degradation, disrespect towards their Holy Prophet to say that he's hallucinating. So they pulled their swords and there was a great commotion in the room where the Holy Prophet is lying. So the Holy Prophet got angry with all of them and he said, this is not befitting to happen in front of a Prophet. Leave. And the Holy Prophet kicked everyone out of his room. The only one who remained with him is Imam Ali, taking care of him. And this has been referred to, this specific incident, the same day, on the Thursday, was referred to by none other than Ibn Abbas, Abdullah Ibn Abbas, as the calamity of the Thursday, Raziyat al khamis so Ibn Abbas was seen walking outside of the house of the Holy Prophet. Ibn Abbas grew up in the house of the Prophet, by the way. That deserves its own study. And he was a child when his father brought him because he was very intelligent and he could memorize quickly. And the, his, his uncle, the uncle of the Holy Prophet, Al Abbas, brought his son Abdullah when he noticed how intelligent he was, how smart he is. And he basically told him, go live in the house with the Holy Prophet and you'll learn everything directly from him. And that's why he is so full of knowledge and he, he has lived everything himself, okay? But he's a difficult character, to, very complex to, to analyze and it deserves lengthy studies and there is some disagreement about a lot of his positions in, in history. So he was seen walking outside of the house of the Prophet crying and his beard is full of tears. It's wet from his tears. And when they saw him, they said, what's wrong Ibn Abbas? And he's like, the Holy Prophet was just prevented from writing his will. So Ibn Abbas understands what this means, what had just happened. And later, he referred to that and he says, no greater calamity happened than the calamity of the Thursday. 
So if you ever hear about Raziyat al-Khamis or the tragedy or the calamity of the Thursday, it's when they prevented the Holy Prophet from writing his will.